Morning everybody, how you guys doing? It's time for part eight of how to port a power saw. This is our Echo CS670. Uh, I'm gonna continue to port it on the bench. Uh, I've mentioned this before, if you're gonna port on your bench, make sure there's no power saws that are ripped apart or anything that you don't want chips in because they can and will fly. Uh, and if you get a chip into the bottom end of a power saw you're working on, um, you're probably not gonna be very happy. Okay, we're working on the intake today. I have put my top end back on. I have used my piston stop. These come in a ring compressor kit. I'll show you guys. I, I keep getting asked. This one has a million miles on it. Okay, this is one of those just generic ring compressor kits. Uh, uh, search for small engine ring compressor kit or something like that and you'll come up with it. They're available all over the interweb. And uh, these come in it. There's also a smaller one that I never use because it doesn't seem to work for me. Uh, this one, the black one. Okay, so I have reconfirmed my wheel is zeroed. It still is. Uh, I've been working on this over the last month, guys. So I just pick it up and put it down and, and uh, you know. So it's nice. Always reconfirm when you're starting work again for the day because you may have bumped your, you may have bumped your wheel or whatever. Just get yourself reacquainted with your timing now this intake is like 76 77 degrees um i will grab our book where is our timing book here folks right here okay i got my timing book in here and again this is why it's super important just write down your numbers you'll save yourself a lot of time and if you're like me and you don't have a ton of time um it's good to, to save any time you can. So our stock timing numbers were 102 on the exhaust, 122 on the transfers. So we have a 20 degree blowdown and our intake was at 75 or 76. I just checked it, it's somewhere in between there. The shape of this port, and I'll show you guys when I set you up on the bench. Um, there's a lip in there on this intake. There's a little lip as it goes in and uh, it's, not the easiest intake to time. I just looked for where it cracks and uh, it's telling me about 76 right now. So before top dead center. Um, that's pretty good intake timing. Uh, what 75 is 150 degrees duration, 76 is 152. Uh, I'm going to recommend you guys stay below, I'm going to say 155 on your intake. You can push your intake farther than that, but um, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, if you raise the exhaust too high, your saw will scream. If you lower the intake too much, your saw is not going to run properly. Um, what happens is you get too much fuel into the bottom end. The piston's open too long and that fuel's coming in. And as the piston comes down and starts compressing it, you're going to start to spit fuel back through the carburetor. Um, that causes two problems. The saw is not going to idle very well, and number one. And number two, especially saws with an air box, even this has a big air filter. That fuel is going to come back. It's going to either saturate the air box or saturate the air filter. And what's going to happen? The saw is going to be rich all the time. Um, like if you have a McCullough or, or a, uh, a home light with the carb box and it's leaking fuel under there, the saw gets really rich because you're actually putting fuel vapor into that fresh air charge. So, which causes runnability issues. You'll have a hard time tuning the saw. And then once the saw gets warm and that fuel burns off, it's gonna get even richer and then it could just suddenly lean out. So um, don't open your intake for too long. Uh, I can't stress that enough because you can't really fix that. You could put a base gasket in and raise the cylinder up, which would raise the intake port and would probably get the saw to run but the problem is with that now if you want more compression or you've already done your exhaust port right if you've already raised your exhaust port and you lift it up well maybe you've gained two degrees of exhaust timing which you don't want so um i did my exhaust port first i would probably say guys do your transfers and your intake first and then adjust your exhaust accordingly um, or don't even touch your exhaust on your first saw I did 
Uh, my first saw I did for the wheel guys, I never touched the exhaust and that thing ran splendidly. Okay, I'm going to get you guys set up on the bench with the light and, and do all the stuff that we do. And let's have a look at this intake and I'll just kind of tell you guys what I'm doing to it. I'm not going to do a lot of work to this intake. I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with the timing as it is standard. Okay, I'll see you guys at the bench. Okay, folks. Here's our intake. Okay. Opens right about there. Again, you got to just use your eye. And decide where it's opening by your eye okay now you can see there's a little ridge in here where the plating went in okay you can just see that ridge okay if I that ridge is probably a degree of timing no joke um, okay so if I'm at 76 degrees of intake okay 75 times 2 is 150 so if it was 75, we'd have 150 degrees of duration. If it's 76, it's 152 degrees of duration. And again, go back in the series. Uh, I showed how to get all these numbers. If you haven't watched, it's in a playlist so that you guys can easily access it. That little noise you hear is, my, is the run out in my timing wheel and it is rubbing the feeler. Okay, so 152. I can, I'm going to add about a degree to this, which means I'm not even really going to measure it. I'm just going to clean up the bottom, okay? I'm just going to clean up the bottom and do a little of my go-fast work to the intake and, and make it work like that. Um, I don't want this intake open too long for the reasons I already mentioned, but also I just want to make a good work saw for somebody and I don't want this thing to use too much fuel because that is important to some people. And I just, I just want it to be a good, easy to tune power saw. Okay. The intake timing is already pretty good on this saw. We're just going to add about a degree, maybe two. And that's why I'm saying to you guys, don't add too much timing when you start out because some of these saws already have aggressive intake. Our biggest problem in this saw was the exhaust roof. Okay. So I'm going to get you guys set up here, fire up the grinder and let's pour an intake together. Okay, and before I port my intakes, I have a look. This is the intake boot that bolts on. Um, here, I'll try and line it up perfect with my fingers. It is like perfect, straight in. So I don't want to open this any more than it already is. Okay, um, that's just how I do it, guys. I don't like a huge intake port. Um, I like to create velocity. So, and notice out of the box, look how rough this is, okay? Uh, I figure they left it like that for a reason. We're going to work on it. I just wanted to show you guys that. Let's get to grinding. Okay, one more thing for you guys, because I just, I keep, I really want to make this series as complete and thorough as possible. I think you guys deserve it. A lot of you want to learn, and if I can teach you, I'm going to do it, Okay. I'm going to dial this back a little bit. Okay. There's about 15 thousands. Look how small that is. Here's a business card. A tattery business card. Okay. A business card doesn't even fit in that. That's about one degree of timing in this saw. So keep that in mind. Okay. That is one degree of timing. So if I don't want to move this very far, the bottom of it, I'm going to have to be very, very careful on this saw. And again... If you want to measure this, okay, if you want to measure this, measure to the bottom of your port, okay, you guys see that? Measure to the bottom of your port, so say this one is 477 thousandths, and what you can do is subtract 15 thousandths, so 462 thousandths would be what we're aiming for, okay, lock it down, close enough. Okay, and then you could use that to measure the height of your port. Okay guys, let's get the grinder fired up and let's pour us a cylinder. We're not going to do much work to this. This intake is in a bad shape. Notice it's lower in the middle. Uh, I like that. Um, Echo makes a good saw. I'm actually, I'm actually pretty excited to run this thing guys. So, 
In fact, I'm really excited to run this thing. All we're doing is enhancing what the factory gave us. Okay, I'm going to fire up the grinder and let's port this thing. Okay, friends, I've put my little egg-shaped burr in there. I'm going to fire up the Dremel and uh, get the port in. I'm going to start on the top. I want to rough this top up even more than it already is. Okay, I got my cutting oil again like I use. Use whatever you want. Uh, WD-40 can be anything. Again, this intake doesn't need much work, guys. I hope you guys can see. I don't want to touch the edges because, again, that intake fits on here perfectly. Okay, I want this rough. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm almost, I'm putting little lines in it, okay? Every builder has their own way of doing this. Um, I like it rough, okay? As rough as possible on this intake. Okay, see, see the finish on there? Now I'm happy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this bottom. I'll try and get you guys zoomed in here. Okay, I'm going to go into this bottom. And the same thing, I'm going to start roughing it. See that? Now I'm going to work my way back out. I'm just going to get most of this, most of this roughed in. Little casting line on the side, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Get my tool, same thing. Go in on this side. Okay guys, and I'm just gonna get in here. See how that grinding is back in there? Okay, that's I'm gonna start in there and I'm just gonna keep pulling it back until it see that line's getting bigger and bigger and work my way back out. Again, there's a big casting mark in here. I just want to get rid of that. It probably doesn't matter. Okay, guys, I'm just going to turn this off. I want you guys to have a good look at what we're doing in here. Okay, see how I'm just roughing up the intake. I like the shape of this intake. Okay, see that line in there? I'm starting to blend that out. I haven't touched my timing yet. I just want to get this intake to a finish that I think will work. Whether it will or not, who knows, guys. A lot of this stuff is trial and error. Okay, I'm going to pause you here. I'm going to blow the chips out and give you an even better look. Okay. See how rough that is? I don't sand these or do anything. My tooling marks, I want. Now... I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in and work this corner, okay, and this corner here, see that guys, okay, I'm going to turn my tool back on, okay, now I'm going to start running it into that corner. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now typically in these corners the plating comes in and it's very hard. Just be careful when you're grinding the corners here, down in here. Typically you're going to hit that plating and when you blow through it you might uh, you might do damage, you know, like just, just be careful. Get my tool. Okay, now I'm going to go into the other side here, into this corner. Same thing. Okay. Okay, I'm going to hit the bottom now, right all the way up. Now I'm working my way down to where the intake enters the cylinder. All I'm doing right now, guys, is getting rid of any casting marks and roughing and roughing this up. I'm actually not changing the fork finding. Okay, a lot of people ask about smoothing the intake. I don't ever do that. I, I want the fuel to stay in suspension. Okay. Just getting rid of this casting defect. See the line? See the tip of it right there? Okay. Other side, that line's still there. Just trying to get rid of it. As best as I can. Now I'm going to hit the top again. I want it really rough. I'm putting little grooves almost into there. When you run your finger across it, it's chattery. That's what I want. Okay, back into the bottom. Okay, I'm going to stop and check my work again. I'm going to blow it out and let's have another look. Okay, see how rough that is on the top here? That's what I want. Now notice there's a little more of a dip on this side than on that side, so I'm actually going to match this side to that side. Okay? Again, we have not touched our timing at all. Okay? We're completely stock at this point. And this saw would probably run okay like that, but we're going to move it just a little bit, just give it a little bit more fuel. Okay? Again, dip my tool. Gonna get back into this corner. Oh, there we go. Again, guys, work slowly, check your work. If you keep checking and you work slowly, you won't walk anything. Okay? That's the key. Don't don't go crazy hogging stuff out if you're not sure where you want to go. It's all in the details, guys. All in the details. Okay, I'm getting closer to the edge. Okay, and again, I'm hitting the plating. 
Well, I gotta be careful because when I break through that plating, I am actually gonna change and I could make a big wow. So I'm moving quickly here. It's the plating's pretty hard in this cylinder, which is good. That's a sign of a quality cylinder. But a quality cylinder is generally harder to grind on because the plating's so hard. Hey guys, did you see that? I broke through it and now I'm just working my way back. There we go, do you see that? I got rid of that lip. Okay, now, I'm gonna pause you guys here. I'm gonna set you up over the cylinder and I'm just gonna hit that edge a little bit and raise this port. Now remember, remember to check your work often, okay? I'm not adding much to this, so I'm, uh, I'm not super concerned about what we're doing here, okay? Here's a good picture. Okay, yeah, like basically at this point, we're probably have hit our timing number. I've just ground the factory chamfer off. There's a good shot of a factory chamfer. We're gonna chamfer this next once we've hit all of our numbers. Now notice this intake's gonna crack in the middle. Okay, notice the shape of it. Okay, now I'm just gonna blend this a little bit, keep this arch continuous. I want this intake to crack right in the center. That's just my thoughts. Um, your thoughts might be different and that's okay. Um, again, this is just how I do things, guys. You're gonna have to try stuff and see what works for you. I'm just gonna clean this up, give me a second. Again, guys, I can actually clean this up from this way. Okay, and that's it. Look how symmetrical that is. I'm super happy. There you go. That is an intake. Again, I'm not going to dress this up a little bit. See, I added that little hump in here. Okay. And it's the same on this side. See how they match? There you guys go. And I mean, you can just keep roughing this all day if you want. Just dressing everything up, making sure it's consistent. Again, it doesn't really matter. The saw will run. Um, I see some beautiful porting jobs on the internet, but... Um, Sometimes I wonder if that stuff, if it matters. Um, some of the best saws I've built have porting that just looks like this. Uh, I have saws that run good, but they're not any better than, you know, something like this that have beautiful porting in them. So, again, guys, I don't begrudge you if you want to make your porting look nice. That's a sign of craftsmanship, but, I mean, it doesn't. I don't think it's going to change anything. Again, I'm just getting rid of anything I don't like. But uh, I would say this is pretty much done. Okay, I'm going to blow it out again, give you guys a really good look. And uh, we can recheck the timing if we want. Again, I'm not really adding any timing on this saw. But uh, let's yak about that when I get this blown out. See the nice shape? Okay. We're good with that. Now, we're going to talk about it after I blow it out. Give me a second here, guys. Okay, guys, there's our finished intake port. See how rough it is? There's chatter marks. Okay. Notice the shape. Okay, that's pretty much how it was factory. All we did was basically just lowered the center a little bit. Now, some of you are going to ask... This is the factory shape, those little bumps here, okay? Um, I just continued on with what they did. You don't want to grind on the top of the intake unless you really know what you're doing. 
Be very careful as you creep up to here because on some saws, guys, your rings, if you raise this, your ring might go past there. Um, you don't want that. So um, just be aware. Okay, just rough up the top. You can smooth out the corners and, you know, just give it a consistent shape. Pay attention to where your flange mounts. Okay, and again, I, I like this shape. I want it to start flowing right in the middle. Notice how consistent that is? That's what I like. I want a consistent look or a consistent shape in there. Okay, all we basically do is take the chamfer out. See how it's a straight shot now into the bottom end. Okay, so that's intake porting in a nutshell. Notice that didn't take very long. Um, all we're doing, guys, is we're accentuating what the factory gave us. That's what I try and do in every saw I build. Some of these builds we're doing, yeah, they're, they're turned right up. But I'm just having fun, guys. This is a work saw. I want this thing to last, and uh, I want it to be a good, reliable saw for somebody. So... Um, because let's face it, I can't keep them all, guys. Um, you know, I, I like the fleet of saws I have right now. I'd like to add a few, but uh, can't keep them all, guys. Other folks need power saws too, so um, we'll talk about that in the future one day. But So there you go. Um, next step is we're going to chamfer it, smooth all the ports out, because we don't want to catch a ring and we don't want to tear the piston up. Remember that. When you're grinding on these on these transfers, the exhaust port especially in the intake, make sure you get your finger in there with a piece of sandpaper and just run it over that edge that you've cut and make sure that it's not sharp. And your finger will be your guide, okay? Um, otherwise, you're going to cut that piston up. And like I've said before, you might get some super, super fine lines after you port. That's typical guys, um, a lot of saws, you'll just get that. It's not wrecking the piston, it's just breaking in. So um, that kind of stuff I don't worry about, but you don't want, like you don't want a scored piston. So just be aware of that. If you're checking your numbers, and again, check your numbers often. If you want, I, I'm, a, I, I'm an advocate of check your numbers often because you'll never go too far and you'll get used to what this much does to each saw and you'll get quicker at it if you check your numbers and then you don't go too far so um, i'm super happy with this cylinder we're going to chat for this and deburr it and i'm just going to run sandpaper over this cylinder most of you guys don't have ball hones um i like a hone honing is like the cat's meow um they are expensive and they're different sizes. I don't expect the average guy to have a ball hone, so we're gonna sandpaper this and that'll be fine. Okay guys, I'm really happy that you guys are enjoying this. I'm so glad that I could do this for you guys. And uh, uh, a lot of you are emailing me and a lot of you guys are learning and that's good. That's all I want. Uh, you will connect the dots, okay? It might take a while. It, some people, it might take a couple saws. Some people, it might take a lot of saws. Um, after a while, guys, as you do this, you're going to start connecting the dots. And that's just from experience. And uh, I'm always learning and growing and doing different saws and doing mods. and Because I want to build my wealth of experience. And I'm willing to put the time in to do that. And uh, it's just like learning a trade. Any of you out there that are in a trade... Um, you know, I remember learning my trade. I'm a sheet metal worker. I built ductwork. When I got a chance to work with a guy who was like legendary and, and when I got that chance, I stuck to him like glue and was a sponge for years. And uh, I still work with that man. And it's been almost 20 years since he trained me. And, uh, you know, I appreciate his knowledge and I've always been learning and growing in my trade. Otherwise you get stagnant and it's like, um, if you start getting bored with this stuff, you need to try more extreme things. But at the beginning guys, just take your time. Um, take your time and you will be able to port power saws and do what you want. But you got to get through the first half dozen and make them run. You know, maybe some of your buddies have saws that they want ported. Let them know you want to learn how to port and you'd be surprised. A lot of guys will let you port their saws. And uh, 
just take it easy on them turn them up slowly uh, a saw that's slightly turned up will be amazing to most people's uh, in most people's hands because they've never had a turned up saw so it's once you start dealing with guys that run ported saws every day they want the top echelon and that's where you really got to be careful because there's a fine line between horsepower and longevity and also the more power they make the harder they become to tune the more uh, you have to make sure the chain is really spot on like it, there's a whole other ball of wax so but we're not doing that here guys we're just porting a nice reliable knock on wood reliable power saw okay I flap my gums for long enough how to port a power saw the intake edition thank you so much to everybody that comes here and and is watching this series I'm having a blast making it for you and uh, I have ideas for more series that we can do and I'll just put them in a playlist and then they'll be there forever and you guys can re-watch them and just continue to learn. Thanks for watching. Take her easy guys. Later.